Hey y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, welcome. Please be sure to check out the other content. And if you enjoy that content, please hit the subscribe button. We would love to have you here. Also, I have a Facebook group. It's also called Craftable Things. And in that group, we pretty much share our crafting skills. We answer any questions. And we're just there to support each other. So I would love if you would also go there and like our group. For my returning subscribers, welcome back. So, I have some visitors coming tomorrow and I want to get my guest room set up. And I need to make a new doormat for the room. So, of course, I am going to sub onto this Traffic Master mat that comes from Home Depot. This is an 18 by 30 mat and I'm just going to be subbing on the center part which is about 24 and a half inches wide by 12 and a half inches long. This mat is great for indoor use and it can be used in a covered patio or entryway. Okay, I don't think it's fully made for to sustain the outdoor elements, but if you have a covered entryway, you can definitely use it there. It also says that it's easy to clean. There is a rubber backing on it, and it repels water. So that is what I'm going to be doing. I already have our image printed, so we are just simply going to piece this together and then press this onto the mat. And welcome my guest who's coming tomorrow. All right, y'all, so let's get started. All right, y'all, so we are going to get ready to cut this out and paste it together, or piece it together. So I am going to leave this little piece, this white piece here, so that I can piece it together. But I am going to cut the white piece off of this side. So we have this cut out and so now I am just going to piece this together and I see there's a little bit of white still left on to where I need to piece it. So I'm just going to cut that sliver of white off. Alright, so now we are going to get ready to piece it together, and as you see, it fits. I can piece it a little piece of one of that. And I'm removing all of the paper because I don't want that. If you have just the slightest bit of the white paper um, in between the ink, it will be noticeable and you will be able to tell exactly where your break is. Okay, so for today I am using my ink, Dynamic Ink, and you guys can find that in my Etsy shop. And I am also using, honestly speaking, sublimation paper, which I have had really, really good results with this paper. And so I'm using it today. And honestly speaking, they recommend that you print it on just regular plain paper setting. And so that's what I've been doing. My colors have been vibrant and I'm using less ink when I do that. 
So to piece this together, I just need to, you can either put a little bit of adhesive here. I usually use the polycrylic uh, spray to kind of paste it down. But today I'm simply going to use some heat tape. I don't think that it's that, that serious. And before I do that, what I want to do is lint roll the mat. So as I said before, this is the Traffic Master mat from Home Depot. And I have made these for other people, but I have not made one for myself. And I feel like this is a perfect time to actually use it in my guest room. Alright, so I'm going to let roll this. And just a nice slight lip roll. You may think that there's nothing on there, but... There, there are little particles and you don't want any discoloration in your mat and you also don't want anything to cause that image not to sublimate okay so let's get started we are just going to put on here and I'm just going to use a little bit of heat tape to do it and it looks like it is laying down perfectly. Move it down just a tad. All right, so since I have like all this white space and this isn't an all over, I am going to tape it from this part, from the front, okay? Because it's not all over. If it were all over, I would definitely need to make sure that I taped it um, in the back, which I'm still going to tape it a little in the back. I just wanted to get it even, and then I'm going to flip it over, and then here I will tape it in the back, just so that that seam, so it's kind of pressing down nicely. I am going for a seamless press, so I am taping down the entire seam so that I can achieve that. Alright guys, let's turn it over and look at that. That looks that looks good. Looks just a little bit up, but I'm happy with that. Alright, so we're going to just keep it turned over. Then as you can see, it fits the surface that we are sublimating on pretty evenly. And I'm just going to get ready to tape it down. I'm going to tape it down because I don't want it to shift as it is being pressed. I'm going to see if I can press this in one press. I may need to press it twice. But it's okay if I do. Alright y'all, so I had to move it over a little bit because I can kind of tell that it's not really centered because the W is starting here and the E was all the way over here and that's not what I want. So I'm going to move it over just a little so that I can see how centered it is. So my E is ending here and I have about, I need to move it over just a tad bit more. My E, and so I can kind of fit three fingers, kinda. So we are going to sublimate it just like this. This is going to be fine for me. All right guys, so we're gonna get ready to press this. This is all laid out. We will be pressing this at 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Okay, now with this paper, you you really don't have to press it for it that long and I am going to see how it comes out. And the heat doesn't have to be so high with this paper and also this paper, the ink does not release from the back of the paper. I am going to use a butcher paper just because I like to be careful 
and um, sometimes the, the ink, it's not a, an all over print, but sometimes the ink can seep from the other side. So I still like to use the butcher paper, but you do not have to worry about that more so with this paper. All right, so we are going to get ready to press. All right, guys, so I just want to check and see. I can probably press this. I can probably press this on one on one press. Let me try it. Because the width, the width of this heat press is about is 24 inches, and this is this piece right here is 24 and a half, but it does not take up the whole 24 and a half. So I think we may be safe, y'all. Alright, so I'm going to press this. Make sure that your pressure is adjusted so that your uh, heat press can close and apply the, the pressure needed for this mat. Alright, before I completely move it off, I am just going to check and make sure that that color transferred. And y'all, it did. It transferred on both sides yep it did all right y'all so that's it and we are done pressing our rug welcome and then as they leave safe travels everything turned out pretty good my e though that edge did not get the amount of pressure that i wanted or honestly, I probably should have had it kind of a little more centered underneath the heat press, but that is okay. I do want you guys to know, when you're pressing these, don't be alarmed by the smell that comes from pressing this rubber because it will smell, and I am inhaling all that, but this is our mat, and it turned out exactly the way that I wanted. All right, so it's a nice size, and I'm going to show you guys what this looks like in my guest room. So we are now in my guest room and I'm going to show you the old mat that was there and how this mat is going to make this room so much more welcoming when you open the door and wish you well when you leave. All right, y'all. So here's the old mat and I probably should have changed it a long time ago, but I'm changing it now. And here is the new mat. Which looks so much better. Alright y'all, so that's it for today. It was so simple to submit that mat. I didn't do anything special. Honestly, I just used some fonts and I pulled that image from the Adobe Stock um, collection. And for the Adobe Stock collection, I do pay a monthly fee. I think it's $19.99 and you get 10 free Adobe Stock photos that you can use in anything. So that works out well for me and I, I love this map. I can't wait for my guests to come and hopefully they will feel welcome when they do. And that's it y'all. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like the video. And if you're not already a subscriber, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to post content at least once a week. Sometimes I do make it to twice a week. So I would love to have you here. Also, don't forget to join my Facebook group, Craftable Things. And also, y'all, I forgot to mention earlier, but I have a new vlogging channel that I started a few weeks ago called Teach, Craft, Live. I would love for y'all to join me there also. I'll be talking about teaching. I'll be talking about crafting, the business side and the hobby side, and also life in general. And I would love to have you all there. But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.